we have here is a high speed camera, 330 frames per second, USB camera connected to the computer, and I'm using a software program called AMCAP, which you have to use to uh, control the camera because this doesn't have any uh, doesn't have any buttons on it. Uh, this is on a tripod, and then we just have a regular uh, LED monitor. And so what we're trying to do basically is measure the absolute. Uh, we're, we're trying to get an absolute measure of human reaction time. We're, we're we're trying to eliminate all the latency that's related to servers and fiber optics and the latency in the mouse because when you click the mouse, obviously there's a slight latency between when you your muscles activated and actually touches the sensor. There's also some latency through into the into the uh, the Windows 10. It's about 16 milliseconds for a typical mouse. Monitor is about 20 milliseconds, this particular model, uh, this is LG, I believe. Yeah, it's LG, so about 20 milliseconds. And the, the, of course, the, the server that uh, hosts human benchmark, if we, uh, human benchmark is, human benchmark is hosted in New Jersey, so that you're talking about 100 milliseconds of latency there. So all in all, the latency of an online reaction time test is very significant. So what happens if you if you record it using a high speed camera, you find that the human reaction time is really only about 20 milliseconds, which is kind of paradoxical because we always hear you know it's anywhere from 150 to 250 milliseconds, but but that's obviously not uh, not correct because what this what this does is it captures if you take a thousand milliseconds and divide by 330, you get just around uh, just a bit over three three milliseconds, three point oh three milliseconds, and so each frame rate on this camera, if you if you bring in to your to your editing program, right, you bring in this this footage, and you basically go from where the screen turns uh, the color that that stimuli, which is a green, and then the point where you press this little uh, I just use this because this is a very conspicuous way to record when your muscle has reacted to the stimuli, right? There's no, you, you're not aiming to get a mechanical actuation of some kind, it's immediate. So the minute you see your muscle flexing there, then you know you're tendon, then you know, uh, you know that you've, you've reacted to the stimuli. So that's what we do. We, we wait for the screen to turn green. Once it turns green, we set that at point zero. And then once the muscle has reacted, at that point, what we do is is cut out the video. And so when you do that, you can estimate how many frames have elapsed, and the number of frames that have elapsed determine the time that, that has elapsed. So that's about three three milliseconds times about, uh, it's about 25 milliseconds total. So you can't really look at reaction time uh, in a diachronic manner like that, because what you're doing is you're basically dealing with, you know, Mostly noise, mostly latency, not actual human reaction times. But theoretically, human nervous system is incredibly efficient. It can process information at a speed that's that's in excess of digital systems. So that's why this is a this is a pretty interesting setup. And this camera right here is a 330 FPS camera that I bought for about seventy dollars on AliExpress. I'm going to get a a a, uh, a contrast tech camera, which sells for about some Mars 650, I believe. 815 frames per second and costs about 500 bucks. So I'm going to upgrade that. And then I'm working with you know one millisecond of latency instead of to the three. So that just gives me an even more accurate measurement, which it's already pretty accurate, but one millisecond is ideal.